Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome to the first of my two LEGO Harry Potter collection videos. In this video, I will be covering all of the LEGO Harry Potter products that were released in the year 2018. Note, I will not be talking about any of the Fantastic Beast products that were released alongside this line, but I probably will be doing another video featuring those. In the year 2018, Harry Potter came back to our lives. The last time that we saw LEGO Harry Potter was back in 2017, which was for the LEGO Dimensions theme, and then previously we only saw it back in 2010-2011, which I have reviewed a lot of the sets from that era since I was alive then, and I was able to pick those up. But in the year 2018, we got a total of one polybag, two promotional items, one direct-to-consumer, five regular retail sets, three brickheads, and a collectible minifigure series featuring 22 characters, or actually 16 characters that were Harry Potter themed, to collect. Featured right in front of us are the boxes to all of those products. The only thing that I am missing from the 2018 wave of LEGO Harry Potter products is that promotional Target exclusive Hedwig giveaway. Since I don't own it, I will be taking a picture off the internet for that, so you guys can check that out later on in this video. But we're gonna get started and we're gonna go just in line. We're gonna start with the poly bag and then work our way through all the way to the end with our brick heads and the minifigure series. So getting right into looking at all of the products that we got within 2018 for the Harry Potter theme, we're going to start off with the polybag, that being set number 30407, Harry's Journey to Hogwarts. This set includes 40 pieces and a minifigure of Harry Potter. This set retailed for $3.99 in the US and was a Target and Walmart exclusive. Like I mentioned before, this set is quite easy to find. You might even be able to still find it at your local store. Here's just a quick look at the front of the poly bag featuring your main set. And then you can spin it around to take a nice look at the back right there if you're interested in that. The next set is set number 40289, Diagon Alley. This set includes 374 pieces and a minifigure of Mr. Garrick Ollivander. This set was a gift with purchase item from LEGO stores and LEGO shop at home between November 9th and 21st. When you spend $99 or more on LEGO Harry Potter product, I bought the Harry Potter direct-to-consumer set that you'll see in a couple seconds to get this promotional item. Also note that this promotional item has a $20 value according to Lego. The packaging for this set I think is very nice, just showing a very nice look at Diagon Alley with some of those weird shops going on in the very background since there is more to Diagon Alley than just what we see within the films. And then there's a look at the back and there's a push tab to this set as it's a smaller box. The next set is our first direct-to-consumer for the LEGO Harry Potter line, that being set number 71043, Hogwarts Castle. This set includes 6,020 pieces with four minifigures of Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Salazar Slytherin, and Rowena Ravenclaw. 15 of them unnamed and 12 of them named characters. Also note that this set retails for $399.99 and came out in September 1st of 2018. The box art for this set is beautiful. I really love the moon and the sky and all of this, all, just all of it just looks so beautiful. The back of the box also features a lot of the interior looks as well as some of the play features and stuff since this is mainly a display set. Continuing down the list, we now hit the retail sets. We have set number 75950, Aragog's Lair. This set includes 157 pieces and two minifigures of Harry Potter and Ron Weasley. This set came out July 1st as a Target exclusive and then became available everywhere in August of 2018. This set retailed for $14.99 and I believe is going to be retiring very soon. Taking a look at the front of the box, you can see your main characters, the regular box are right here for the 2018 LEGO Harry Potter sets. Taking a look at the back, you can take a look at some of the features, and then we also have the push tab right there since this is a smaller box. The next set is set number 75953, Hogwarts Whomping Willow. This set includes 753 pieces and six minifigures of Argus Filch, Severus Snape, Seamus Finnegan, Hermione Granger, Ron Weasley, and Harry Potter. Yet again, this set released July 1st as a Target exclusive and then was available everywhere August 1st. This set retailed for $69.99 in the US. There's a quick look at the front of the box for this set. And there's a quick look at the back of the box also showing that you can connect to this to one of the other sets that was available at this particular time. 
Next, we have set number 75954, Hogwarts Great Hall. This set includes 878 pieces and minifigures of Hagrid, Nearly Headless Nick, Professor Quirrell, Professor McGonagall, Albus Dumbledore, Draco Malfoy, Susan Bones, Hermione Granger, Harry Potter, and Ron Weasley. This set also came out July 1st as a Target exclusive and then was available everywhere August 1st of 2018. This set retails for $99.99 in the US, which I think is a very nice deal. Taking a quick look at the front of the box, this is another really cool set, at least in my opinion. And then there's a quick look at the back of the box, also featuring that same sort of advertisement right there that you can connect it to the Whomping Willow set, which I will be doing later on within this video. Next, we have set number 75955, Hogwarts Express. This set includes 801 pieces and minifigures of a Dementor, the Trolley Witch, Remus Lupin, Ron Weasley, Harry Potter, and Hermione Granger. This set came out July 1st as a Target exclusive and then was available everywhere August 1st. This set retailed for $79.99 in the US. The box art for this set I think is very nice. I really like how it shows all the characters interacting and everything. I, I just think that this is a very nice box art for this particular set. The back of the box features a lot of the other play features and some of the other things that you can do with this particular model. And then finally, the last retail set is set number 75956, Quidditch Match. This set includes 500 pieces, minifigures of Severus Snape, Luke and Bull, Marcus Flint, Oliver Wood, Harry Potter, and Hermione Granger. This set came out July 1st as a Target exclusive and stayed that way throughout its initial run. This set retailed for $39.99 in the US. Taking a look at the back of the box, you just gotta flip it around. You can take a look at some of the play features. Very interesting set. Taking a look at our second promotional item, we have the LEGO Harry Potter minifigure collection under set number 5005254. This includes minifigures of Boggart, Severus Snape, Horace Slughorn, Madame Hooch, and Professor Dolores Umbridge. This set includes 25 pieces and was a gift with purchase from Toys R Us outside of the US. This set was also available within the US as a Barnes & Noble gift with purchase with any LEGO purchases over $75. Taking a look at the very front, I still have the protection cover on the very front of it. And then we can take a look at the back. And that's pretty much all for the packaging. Starting off the brickheads, we have set number 41615, Harry Potter and Hedwig. This set includes 180 pieces and retailed for $14.99 in the US. Hedwig is labeled under number 50 and Harry Potter is labeled under number 49. Taking a look at the back of the box, just gotta spin it around. We have a push tab since it is one of those smaller boxes and also some other views of your characters. Next, we have set number 41616, Hermione Granger. This set includes 127 pieces for $9.99. Hermione Granger is labeled as number 51 within the Brickheads line. Turning her around, you can take a look at the back of the box right there. Shows the other characters that you can get within this line right there and then the push tab for this box since it's one of the smaller ones. And then the final Brickhead set is set number 41621, Ron Weasley and Albus Dumbledore. This set includes 245 pieces for $20 in the US. Ron Weasley is labeled as number 60 and Albus Dumbledore is labeled as 61. This set was a Target exclusive back when it was released. All of the Brickheads have currently been retired. These all released alongside the regular retail sets on July 1st as Target exclusives and then was available mostly everywhere come August 1st. Taking a look at the back of the box, we have another push tab right there and then some other looks at these characters. And then finally, we have set number 71022, LEGO Minifigures Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts Series 1. Since this is a blind bag series, the piece count varies. We get a total of 22 characters to collect, 16 of them being Harry Potter, the other ones from Fantastic Beasts. Within this full box, you get a total of 60 bags. 45 of the bags contain minifigures from the Harry Potter theme, 15 of them include minifigures from the Fantastic Beasts theme. A full box of minifigures will set you back a total of $240, a full set of minifigures will set you back $88, and then the single packs cost $3.99 a piece. If you only wanted to get the 
the Harry Potter minifigures and not the Fantastic Beast ones, that'll set you back around $64. Taking a look at the packaging, this is the packaging for a full box of minifigures. You get your piece count on the side, you get your Harry Potter and Fantastic Beast logo at the top. Really love how these box turn out like this, and this is the only minifigures box that I do own inside my collection since, since it is the only one that I bought a full box for. Taking a look around the box, you can take a look at the back, get the barcode right there, and there's a look at the side. And that is all for the box right there. I still have my sealed bags that are left over from my full set left in there. I have this bag right here. This is one of the open bags, just to take a look at the packaging for that, front and back. And then we also get one of these minifigure sheets within each of the bags, just showcasing all of the Harry Potter minifigures on the front. And then the Fantastic Beast ones on the very back right there with some building instructions for some of the characters. Okay, so here are all of the minifigures that come within the 2018 LEGO Harry Potter sets, including duplicates for a lot of these characters. Within the 2018 wave of LEGO Harry Potter sets, we get a total of 56 minifigures, as well as 27 nano figures that come within the Hogwarts Castle direct-to-consumer. 16 of these minifigures are from the collectible minifigure series. 50 of the minifigures that are featured within this shot right here are unique to the sets that they come in. Six of them are duplicates, most of them being Hermione, Harry, and Ron variants. And some of the characters here do appear again within the 2019 sets. So yeah, let's take a quick look and spin around at some of these characters. Before we start off the minifigure section, I might as well add that we do get some duplicates of some characters within the set. We get some duplicates of Harry inside his normal Hogwarts robes. We get him inside both the Hogwarts Great Hall as well as the Harry's Journey to Hogwarts polybag. Next, we have Harry inside his casual outfit. He comes inside this outfit within both the Aragog's Lair and the Hogwarts Express sets. Next, we have Hermione Granger also inside her Hogwarts outfit. She comes inside the Hogwarts Whomping Willow as well as the Hogwarts Great Hall and also the Quidditch Match set. Next, we have Ron Weasley also inside his Year 2 casual outfit just like our Harry Potter minifigure. This version comes inside both Aragog's Lair as well as the Hogwarts Express set. And then finally we have Professor Severus Snape who comes inside both the Hogwarts Whomping Willow and the Quidditch Match sets. So yeah, let's move on and take a look at all of our minifigures in great detail. Taking a look at our first character, we have Harry Potter. We get a total of six different versions of him in 2018, in addition to two duplicates. So taking a look at these characters, we can zoom right in. We can take a look, we have Harry inside his casual outfit. We have mostly Harry Potter minifigures from years one through two. You can see that we get mainly some torso printing on both the front and the back of these characters. All of these characters include the same facial expression other than the two on the very last studs over here, we have the two from the collectible minifigures line that get new and exclusive facial expressions for Harry Potter. And also we do get some leg printing on both of these characters, this one including some dual molding right there on those short legs right there for his pajamas. All of these minifigures include a dark brown wand for their accessory, other than of course the Quidditch match Harry includes a golden snitch and his brown broomstick. We also get a candle accessory right here with the year two casual Harry Potter minifigure that comes within the Aragog's Lair. In addition, we also get a Hedwig accessory with the collectible minifigures 2018 year three slash four version of Harry Potter right there, which also has a different hairpiece compared to all the rest of these. Zooming out, you can also see that the version of Harry with his invisibility cloak is the only one to include a cape-like accessory. I really love how that is also used right there. You can see that we have some different types of printing underneath, which I think is really revolutionary for Lego at this time. You can also see that we get a cape a rather larger cape right there for the Quidditch match Harry. You can take a look at the backs of all of these characters. We also get back printing on all of these minifigures, which I think is a very nice bonus. Harry's minifigure uses the same Gryffindor torso piece as some of the other characters for his Hogwarts outfit, as well as his Quidditch outfit, which I showed before. And then you can just take a look at the front yet again, and that does compare both of the later two facial expressions right there, the happy face and then the sort of worried, frightened face right there for the year one slash two version of Harry Potter. So yeah, that's all for our minifigure of Harry Potter. 
Okay, so here are our minifigures of Ron Weasley right here. We get four different versions of his minifigure throughout 2018. One from the collectible minifigures line and then the other ones from the regular retail sets. We get Ron inside his Hogwarts uniform and then two Ron Weasleys within Muggle attire. One of these characters, that being this one, comes inside both the Aragog's Lair as well as the Hogwarts Express set. All of these minifigures include the same accessory of the regular brown wand piece. The collectible minifigures version of Ron includes Scabbers as another accessory and then the one from the Aragog's Lair includes this little lantern piece which was new, newly introduced for that particular time. They all include printing on both the front and the back of their torso pieces. These three right here are all from years 1 slash 2 since they have the normal small legs and then we have the mid-sized legs transition transitioning the character to years 3 slash 4. We also get the same facial expressions for the three Ron Weasleys over here representing years 1 through 2. You can also take a quick look at both of the facial expressions represented on these two characters right there. One happy face and then one super scared face for when Aragog pops up. And then they all have the same hair piece inside that orangey color which also changes into this very more accurate hair piece right here. The Han Solo hairpiece inside that orange color. I really like that. The facial expression for this minifigure I don't really think is as accurate as say the 20, the 2019 version of year 3 slash 4 Ron Weasley. That's definitely a facial expression that I would prefer with this particular hairpiece that they didn't even use on that character. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigures of Ron Weasley. Our next minifigure is of Hermione Granger. We get three different variants of her character right here. One from the collectible minifigure series and then two from the regular retail sets. We get her inside her Hogwarts uniform which comes within three of the sets so we get two duplicates in addition to this version. She comes inside the Hogwarts Whomping Willow, the Hogwarts Great Hall, and the Quidditch Match sets. We also get her inside this casual outfit within the Hogwarts Express. You can also take a look at her two different facial expressions from this year two, one through three technically, but they didn't change the mid legs for this year three set since the, since the Hogwarts Express set is primarily based off year three, though they didn't use the mid-sized legs that they used in 2019 when they did year three sets. They all include the same wand accessory inside that dark tan color. They also get a very nice new exclusive hair piece for Hermione inside her year one through two versions, which I think is very nice that they even made her an exclusive hair piece. We also get Crookshanks right here with the collectible minifigures version. Really love the printing for her Hogwarts robes right there, and this is definitely a very nice version of Hermione Granger year three slash four going on right there. She also uses a new color for that hair piece, which I think is very nice. They all get some back printing on their torsos. And then of course, like I said before, the mid-size legs is being used right here on the year three slash four collectible minifigures version, and then the short legs on the two from years one through two. So yeah, that's all for Hermione Granger. Taking a look at some Gryffindor characters included throughout the 2018 LEGO Harry Potter wave, we have Seamus Finnegan, we have Oliver Wood, and then we have Neville Longbottom, and then finally we have Dean Thomas. Very interesting characters to get. We get two of these within the collectible minifigures line, and then these other two characters come within the regular retail sets. We get Seamus Finnegan right there inside his Hogwarts uniform. This is a year two slash one version of his character, I guess. He comes with a dark tan wand piece. We also get the normal child face for his character, which I don't really feel like it fits him too well, though I think the hair piece that they chose being that more spiky up hair piece definitely fits his character and I think that he does have a double sided facial expression. We also get Oliver Wood which also includes a head piece that is a reuse from another minifigure. He uses the Gryffindor Quidditch robes which is the same torso piece used on your Harry Potter minifigure from that particular era. We also get a very nice dark red keep on that character. For Neville Longbottom we get the mid-sized legs, same thing goes for Dean Thomas. I guess this is a sort of year two slash three version of his character since they just introduced these mid-sized legs within the collectible minifigures line. He comes with one accessory being this Mandrake right here which is the actual baby version of the Mandrake. We will, we will be getting an adult sized Mandrake within the series two collectible minifigures for Harry Potter. He also gets some very nice herbology outfit right there with, with the earmuffs right there on his hair piece which I think fits him really well and also his facial expression I really love. I really love the Neville Longbottom minifigure that they decided to make. 
And then finally we have Dean Thomas inside this winter Hogwarts robes attire right there. He comes with one accessory right here of a Gryffindor flag, which that's a very nice print to actually get within that particular collectible minifigure. And then both of these characters both include wand pieces as their accessories in addition, one inside brown and one inside dark brown. These characters also have some very nice back printing right there. You can take a look at them like such and also some back printing on Oliver Wood and also some back printing on Seamus Finnegan. So yeah, that's pretty much all for these minifigures. Taking a look at Draco Malfoy right here, we get him inside his Hogwarts uniform within the Hogwarts Great Hall set, and then we get him inside his Quidditch uniform within the Harry Potter Series 1 collectible minifigures. One thing to note is that both of these characters include different facial expressions. The one within the Hogwarts Great Hall set does include a double-sided facial expression. They both include the same hair piece. You can take off the hair piece on this one to see the other facial expression on his character. They both include some very nice back printing right there. You can take a look at that. Another thing to note that I think is very interesting, that Draco comes with a dark green broomstick compared to a black broomstick or a regular brown broomstick. I don't know why they gave him a special color. His torso piece is the same exact torso piece used on the other Slytherin Quidditch players, which I'll be showing in a little bit. And of course, since these are based off year 1 slash 2, they both include these small legs for their characters. So yeah, that's pretty much all for Draco Malfoy. For the two Slytherin Quidditch players, we get Marcus Flint and Lucan Bowl right here. Very interesting to see both of these characters represented in LEGO form, especially Lucan Bowl right there. Very interesting character choice, I guess. This is also a character from, I guess, year one slash two of Harry Potter, or maybe he wasn't in the second one since I don't really know too much about his character, but this is, I think, the second time that we got Marcus Flint. We got him previously within 2010. One interesting thing about Marcus Flint's character is that he does include this special accessory with his broomstick being a stud gun to fire off the quaffle. I think that's very interesting that they decided to go with that route. That's a very interesting play feature that I showed before. And also, the torso pieces are the same ones used on your Draco Malfoy collectible minifigures character. They have the longer legs since they're older students. And then, of course, they have these dark green capes. They all have the back printing, the same back printing since it's the same torso. And I think that the head on Lucan Bowl is a reuse from another minifigure. And also, I think it's very interesting to see the bowl cut hairpiece reused on Marcus Flint right there. I don't know if they have double-sided facial expressions. You can just take a look right there. I don't think either of them do. Well, actually, Luke and Bull does, so there you go. There's a look at that. And, of course, they both have broomsticks as their accessories other than Bludger Bat right there. That's very nice to get with his character. So, yeah, that's all for the Slytherin Quidditch players. Taking a look at Ravenclaw House, we have Cho Chang and Luna Lovegood right here. Both of these characters come from the collectible minifigures series 1. Cho Chang is inside her Hogwarts robes right there. I really think it's interesting that they chose to also include this skirt piece in addition right there since I guess this is based off year 5 version of her character. I really like that we do get some different Hogwarts robes. You don't normally see these. Well, this was the first time that we ever saw any Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff character robes within the Harry Potter theme. She also comes with a barn owl. I guess that's to reference the scene where Harry and her bump into each other within the Order of the Phoenix, which is only in the books actually, which I think is very interesting of an inclusion of an accessory. Her flesh tone, I think, could be light flesh to her character. I don't know why they gave her this darker tone to her flesh. I don't really know why. Her hair piece, I also think, is a very nice hair piece to get. And then also for Luna Lovegood, she gets a new hairpiece mold for her character. She also gets a double-sided facial expression that I'll show in a minute. She gets this very nice side bag right here in this purple color. Some very nice printing on both the front and the back of the torsos of both these characters. She also gets a skirt piece for her character, which I think is very nice that both of these characters include some special skirt pieces. This one with some very nice printing. She comes with a very nice accessory of the Quibbler with the Spectre specs, which you actually get on her minifigure's head, which I like. Both of these characters include these regular brown wand pieces, and both include the mid-sized legs for their characters. Here's a quick look at the backs of the torsos and everything on these characters. No double-sided facial expression for Cho Chang. And then there's no printing on the back of this character on, on Luna's torso, and there's a look at her other facial expression if you were interested. 
So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigures in Ravenclaw House. In Hufflepuff House, we have Susan Bones and Cedric Diggory right here for the first time in Lego form, other than in 2019 when we get a bunch more of his minifigure. Susan Bones has the little girl facial expression right there, a common reuse. I do like her hair piece right there. A lot of people mistake her as Ginny Weasley for some reason. I have no idea why since she does have these yellow streaks right there to represent that she's in Hufflepuff House, which really love that they're actually making Hufflepuff robes for these characters. She does have a double-sided facial expression on her character. If I turn her hair piece around, you can take a look at that real quickly. And then for Cedric Diggory, we get some very nice printing on both the front and the back of his torso piece right there. We also get some very nice leg printing on his character. I don't know why they put leg printing on the, on this character. I don't think they even really needed it, but I do like the extra move going on right there. We have Diggory printed on the very back right here since he's inside his fourth task outfit right here. Really interesting. And then they even give you a printed Triwizard Cup, which is even another bonus since this was the outfit that he was in when he died in the film, so, and even in the book. I just think it's crazy that LEGO even decided to make this character, and I love that they even did it because it works perfectly with one of the 2019 sets that released, which I'll talk about inside my 2019 video. We also get an exclusive facial expression for his character that they do not reuse on his actual minifigure, which I think is very disappointing, but I do like that they keep the same hairpiece and it's inside that regular brown color. I don't know if it changes to dark brown within the actual sets within 2019 or not, but you know, it's a very nice minifigure and I'm really happy that they decided to make him within this particular set. Our next minifigure is Albus Dumbledore, which we get him from years 1 slash 2 over here, and then we have the other Dumbledore years 5 slash 6-ish going on over here, which I really like that they give you both the beginning and ending errors of the movie versions of Albus Dumbledore right here. We also get a very nice pensive accessory right there with your year 5 Dumbledore. I think that's a very cool accessory to get. One has a skirt piece, one does not. You get some printing on both of those right there, some printing on the torsos. You can also see that we get some very nice printing on the backs of their torso pieces and some double-sided facial expressions on both these characters. Well, actually, this one does not have a double-sided facial expression and no back printing on the collectible minifigures version, but either way, very nice minifigures, and I really love the hair comparison, seeing, like, the hair piece, just a plain hair piece, and then in addition to it having the hat piece connected to that, I really love that LEGO went all out with that. And then both of them have different beards, this one with the Gandalf beard and then a new beard piece for the year 5 version right there. If you want to see the separate facial expressions, you'll have to watch my separate reviews on these particular minifigures. So yeah, that's pretty much all for Albus Dumbledore. Our next minifigure is Rubius Hagrid right here, which I really love the way that they redesigned his character within 2018. He comes with two accessories, one being that new umbrella piece inside pink, which I think is wonderful that they even made that, and then the other one being that new lantern piece right there with a circular cylinder piece in trance yellow in there, very nice. He uses the short legs just like all of the other characters, which I think is very interesting since they made a new torso and arm piece for his character. He also uses normal minifigure hands inside Light Flesh, just like all the other minifigures, which I think is very interesting. Those are all connected via some Technic pins. If you take off the arm, you can see how that works like such. Then you can put the arm back in. He gets the one facial expression for his character and then a very nice molded beard piece right there. Not a soft plastic, but a hard plastic, which I really like for his character. And then the overall printing on him and the sleekness on the back of his character I think is very nice. I'm really excited to see if we get any new versions of Hagrid come 2020, since we did get a new variant of his character within 2019, which I'll show inside my collection video for that. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigure of Rubius Hagrid. The next minifigure is Severus Snape right here, which we also get a duplicate of Severus Snape. He comes inside both the Hogwarts Swamping Willow set as well as the Quidditch Match set. And then in addition, within the Harry Potter Bricktober pack, we get the Boggart Severus Snape, which I think is an amazing inclusion. I really love how they did him 
with that scarf piece wrapping around and then having the printing for the front of the ferret right there, I think that's very nice. And also that big red handbag and that big hat on his head, I think that they did a wonderful job with his character. He does, however, have the same facial expression as the other Severus Snape minifigure. You can take a look like this, you can see that we have the same exact facial expression front and back right there for this particular character. We also get some back printing on both these characters, very nicely done. And then we also get the black wand piece for your actual Severus Snape minifigure right there. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigure of Severus Snape. Continuing down the line of teachers right here, we have Professor McGonagall who comes within the Hogwarts Great Hall. And then from the Collectible Minifigure series, we have Professor Flitwick and Professor Sybil Trelawney right there. Very nice to get all of these characters, especially Professor Trelawney right there, since she only came within one set within the Prisoner of Azkaban wave. As for Professor Flitwick, we previously got him within the 2010 Hogwarts Castle set, and then Professor McGonagall, this is a very nice version of her character, which we also get a new version of her character within the advent calendar in 2019, with only the one facial expression unlike the two on this character. We get some very nice printing on Professor McGonagall's legs and torso piece, both the front and the back of her torso. She also gets a double-sided facial expression, which I think is very odd for her character since she has this hat piece and when you put that hat piece on you can slightly see her mouth from underneath the hat piece. I don't know why they did that but they did change it within the 2019 advent calendar like I mentioned before. She has a black wand. As for Professor Flitwick we get a very nice new hair piece for his character which I think fits his character wonderfully. I really love his facial expression and how they gave him the bow tie piece. He comes with his megaphone for his accessory and a brown wand. Get some very nice printing on both the front and no printing on the back of his torso right there. He also gets these coattails right there coming out from underneath his short legs. I really love that. We get Professor Trelawney with a new molded piece for her hair sort of bandana going on right there. Really love that. Facial expression is pretty cool. Love the printing on the front of her torso leading down to her skirt piece and also a dark brown wand and a very nice little cup right there for tea leaves. That's pretty cool to see as another little reference to her character. So yeah, that's all for these professors. <laughs> And then continuing with our professors, Hogwarts isn't Hogwarts without having to replace a teacher every year. We have all of the new teachers that they introduced throughout the years, except for Gilderoy Lockhart, who hopefully comes within the Series 2 collectible minifigures. We have Professor Quirrell, we have Professor Remus Lupin, we have Professor Mad-Eye Moody, we have Professor Dolores Umbridge, and then finally we have Professor Slughorn. Very interesting to see that they made all of these characters right off the bat. Some of these are very sought after, and some of these for the very first time, like Professor Slughorn we got for the very first time. And then Professor Quirrell, this is the first time we've seen him since 2001. Same thing pretty much goes for Mad-Eye Moody, we only saw him within one set within 2004's Goblet of Fire Wave, and same thing goes for Umbridge, which we only saw in once inside 2007. I really love the printing on all these characters, especially Mad-Eye Moody. I really love how they did his character very well done, and he is a two-in-one character, which I'll show in a little bit. We get some very nice printing as well on Dolores Umbridge, and that dual molding for her legs I think is wonderful. Really love that she also gets a little teacup for her accessories. She's just evil looking. I love how they did her, and even having her little cat badge on her, I think that's wonderful. Slughorn looks pretty nice. Really like the facial expression they chose in the torso piece. We will be getting a new version of him, and also of Umbridge within 2020, so you guys can look forward to some comparisons. We also get two-sided facial expressions for some of these characters right here. You can see for Umbridge, we get this really, really unhappy facial expression for her character right there. We also get some other facial expressions for Remus Lupin right here. We get his werewolf eyes going on. We have another facial expression for Quirrell right here, which is, I guess, not something that you want to turn around. That's Voldemort's face underneath the turban. And then I think that we get another facial expression for Slughorn, but I don't really know. But you can turn Mad-Eye Moody into Barty Crouch Jr. right here, which I think is crazy that they decided to go with that double like expression sort of thing going on right there. You can see closer look at these characters and there's Barty Crouch Jr. You also get the little uh, flask right here, the little polyjuice 
bottle with his character, which I think is really crazy that LEGO went all out with that. You can take a look at the back printing on some of these characters right there. Really love that they went all out with some of these minifigures. And then, like I said before, Slughorn, I don't think he has another facial expression. I could be wrong. Yeah, he has another facial expression, so I really like that they did go all out with having all these new facial expressions and even turning Mad-Eye Moody into Barty Crouch Jr. I think that's very nice. There's a look at all of these different facial expressions on all these characters. Really love that they went all out, like I keep saying. So, yeah, that's pretty much all for the defense against the Dark Arts teacher and our one potions teacher. Looking at some of the other characters included in both the sets right here as well as within the promotional items, we have Argus Filch right here, which this was the second time that we got him. We got him before within 2010. We got the Trolley Witch for the very first time in LEGO form. We have Mr. Ollivander for the second time we got him previously within 2011. And then we have Madame Hooch right there for the third time in LEGO form. Very nice to see her return. You can see we get some very nice printing on the torsos of these minifigures. We get some light printing for Filch, which I think is very nice. She he also comes with the lantern piece right here. He does not come with Mrs. Norris. That's the only complaint that I have within the Whomping Willow set that he doesn't come with her. I do love the hair piece that they chose for his character, like having like the balding on the very top. I also like the hair piece choice for Mr. Ollivander. That's a very nice hair piece choice. And then Madame Hooch has the same exact hair piece as the 2010 version. You can take a look at the backs of these characters. We get some very nice printing on them. You can see another print on the back of Madame Hooch's torso right there. You can take a better look at the front of these characters. They also have some alternate facial expressions, which I think is another bonus. You can turn their faces around to get a better look at their other facial expressions. So here's a look at the other alternate facial expressions right here. A lot of scared faces and even Filch being a little bit menacing right there. And also I really love that they gave Madame Hooch those goggles right there. I think this is probably the best version of her minifigure that we got. I still gotta buy a new version of her 2010 minifigure so then I can review the Quidditch match set from that era. So yeah, that's pretty much all for these extra characters over here. In addition, we also got, for the very first time in LEGO form, Nearly Headless Nick, which I think is a very interesting inclusion within the set since this is based off his year one film appearance. I really love that they created this character. I would have liked to see maybe a future where you can pretend to have his head fall off a little bit. I know you can do that with a particular under the neck accessory just as a fun joke. You get some very nice leg printing and torso printing and also this is a different variant as the Moaning Myrtle ghost character that we're going to be getting within the Series 2 collectible minifigures. We get a dark and light gray going on over here. We're going to be getting more of like blue tones going on for the ghosts within the future I guess, which I think is very interesting. We get Dobby right here for the third time in LEGO form. Really love with the dual molding right there. We are all, we are also going to be getting a new Dobby minifigure within 2020 with the same leg torso printing with a new facial expression for the character new printing with an open mouth smile compared to this smile. He also comes with a very nice accessory of Tom Riddle's diary with a very nice print on the very front of that. And then inside you get Harry's sock which I love that they did that as the exclusive print within this particular character. Really love the printing on that character. The, the Dementor styles, I it sort of grown on me. At first I was really hesitant on them using like this more minifigure form. I like how they use the minifigure ghost legs right there. That's very interesting. And the cape is something you gotta get used to right there. The printing for the front and also the printing for the mouth. Using the old hood piece right there. I wonder if they're gonna change that using the new one that they just released for Star Wars. You can take a look at the back printing of all these characters. You also get an alternate facial expression for nearly headless Nick if you're interested in that. And then you can flip up the cape right here. There is no printing on the back of your Dementor and that's pretty much all for these extra characters right here. Next with Nagini as his accessory inside this olive green color we have Lord Voldemort which this is from the collectible minifigures line using that skirt piece and also the torso piece inside that dark green color. Very nice outfit for his character. Really love his facial printing. That's very interesting to see the, what type of face they gave his character. Very like calm and neutral expression which we don't normally see with a Voldemort minifigure. We don't get any back printing on this character which is a little disappointing but I'm really happy that they decided to throw him in within the collectible minifigures line.
And then finally, for our last minifigures, we have the four founders of Hogwarts. We have Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Salazar Slytherin, and Rowena Ravenclaw. All of these characters include some exclusive prints for their legs slash skirt pieces, as well as their torsos front and back. We even get some very cool accessories, like we get the Sword of Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff's cup. The printing on Salazar Slytherin includes the Slytherin's locket, and we even get Rowena Ravenclaw's diadem on her head, which I think is crazy. Really love the beard piece that they decided to use with Salazar Slytherin as well as with Godric Gryffindor. You can also take a look at the hair pieces used for these characters. Very interesting hair piece color right there and also very good use of that hair piece. They all include double-sided facial expression except for Salazar Slytherin right there. They all include capes except for Rowena Ravenclaw and they even include some very nice back printing. Like I mentioned before, you can just flip up their capes to take a good look at all of these different back printings, especially on Rowena Ravenclaw. Really love all these back printings, including on the skirts right there. That's really well done by LEGO. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigures throughout all of the Harry Potter 2018 wave. Moving on to looking at the sets and minifigures right here. Here is everything that we got from 2018 LEGO Harry Potter right in front of us. If you ever wondered what all of those sets looked like all in one big table area right in front of me, that is what it looks like. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the only thing that is missing from this collection is that Target giveaway Hedwig model. So yeah, before we get into looking at the models included within these sets, let's just take a quick look around at this. I'm just going to do a little montage right in the middle just to get a closer look at everything that I have going on over here. Starting off our looks at the sets, we have set number 30407, Harry's Journey to Hogwarts. This includes one minifigure of Harry Potter right here in the front. That version of him is not exclusive, but also comes within the Hogwarts Great Hall that I'll be showing later on, as well as one other set that released in 2019. In addition, this minifigure can also be found in some of the Harry Potter book collections. So taking a look and removing our minifigure from this situation, we get two mini builds within this poly bag right here. The one that I really like the most is probably this little Hedwig cage. That's really cool that they actually made this. It's not in a good size comparison to your minifigure of Harry though. That's the one thing that I have to complain about. But I think that LEGO did a wonderful job for what it is. This is the first time that LEGO has actually made like a cage for Hedwig and I think that's really Nice that they even made it. I like how they used those pieces in, on the bottom right there inside that brown color. You get some golden studs right there just for some extra details. And of course you can take Hedwig out if you so desire. And then we get one of these serving hand pieces on the very top if you want to just pretend that you're carrying it. For our other build, we get this little trolley right here using these pieces down here for the wheels, which I think is a very odd choice, though they do use those for the wheels within the Hogwarts Express set. 
and then we also get some other accessories, one being a cauldron. We get this book right here with the same print from all the other 2018 sets with the Wingardium Leviosa spell on that 1x2 tile. And then we also get this little suitcase in black, very nice. And then of course, if you want to have your minifigure of Harry holding on to this particular area, you can just use his hand and then have it clip onto this particular area and then he's pushing his trunk. Overall, a very nice set, and it's definitely a good way to get your minifigure of Harry Potter if you don't want to buy the biggest sets within this wave. The next set is set number 40289, Diagon Alley. This is the microscale version of Diagon Alley as a promotion that LEGO released alongside the release of the direct-to-consumer Hogwarts Castle microscale set. In comparison, I think that this is definitely a very accurate representation of some of the shops featured within Diagon Alley right here. Hopefully we do actually get a minifigure scale one. It is rumored that the direct-to-consumer for 2020 will be a new Diagon Alley, but I can't say if that's official or not. I've just heard that as the word around the street. But we do get our one minifigure within the set of Garrick Ollivander, which is very nice since we only got him once within the previous Diagon Alley set within 2011. Very nice to get an updated version of his minifigure. I looked at him in the previous bit. Removing him and taking a look at the micro scale builds right here, you can see a lot of different pieces going on over here. Some printed pieces for the sidewalk areas, which I think is even like a bonus right here for this particular set. You can see we also get this headpiece, which is supposed to represent Fred or George Weasley. I don't think that does it as accurately, though I think that is a new facial expression for this particular set. Taking a look, we have Weasley's Wizard Wheezies over here. We have Quality Quidditch Supplies. We have the Bookstore over here. Forgot what that was called, sorry. And then we have Ollivander Shop, and then finally we have Gringotts Wizarding Bank, which I think is very nicely done, and also having the three tier going on over there. Overall, the feel to this set is pretty bland, but I know what they were trying to do. If you take a look in the back, you can see that we do get some minor interiors just for Gringotts and then for Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, which is actually a little bit more exciting for this side than the other one. And then the backs, you just get the very backs of these particular stores, nothing really too special. It is meant to be displayed from the one side, only just showing off all of this parts of Diagon Alley. Looking at our next set, we have set number 71043, Hogwarts Castle. This is the first direct-to-consumer for the 2018 LEGO Harry Potter line. It is rumored that we will be getting another direct-to-consumer this year in 2020. Taking a look right here, we get a total of four minifigures, that being of Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Salazar Slytherin and Rowena Ravenclaw. We get some stickers right there for their plaques showcasing their houses. Very nice that we do get a display stand with those characters. And then we get a total of 27 nano figs right there, which we already looked at pretty much within the last minifigure lookings. So there's a quick look at them again right next to the Weasley's Ford Angula car. In addition, we get a couple of smaller builds within the set. We get Hagrid's Hut right here, which is a very nice rendition of that with the pumpkin patch and everything. Really like that they went with the two house style. And then we also have the Whomping Willow, which of course is a lot less breakier than the one that comes within the Whomping Willow Hogwarts minifigure scale set. We also get, in addition, five of these mini boats right here. Really love how those are built using those window pieces. Very clever idea by LEGO. And then that brings you to the overall model of the micro scale Hogwarts, which, of course, like I mentioned within my actual review for this set, there isn't too much to this set. By that, I mean that this is not a complete look at Hogwarts. This is pretty much only like the main sort of parts that most people see when you look at the films. There is a whole lot more to Hogwarts than just what you see within this one picture. I also really love all the references. Out here you can see that we have the Great Hall, as well as just the bridges and all of, all of the architecture used on the set. And the color scheme I think is very nice. I also really like how it is all supported using some rocky elements down there, just to give it a little bit more of that Hogwarts feel. And you get the Chamber of Secrets in here, which is something that people have been wanting a minifigure scale one, but I don't think LEGO is going to deliver that quite yet. We also have right out here a reference to the Goblet of Fire using the horn, using the Hungarian Horntail Dragon on that tower. I really love that they went all out with this set. Also on the outer looks, you can see that we have some Death Eaters and Dementors just hanging out around there, flying around the front of the castle. We have a lot of stickers just for details, especially 
on some of the window pieces. We get some of these printed pieces over here, trying to focus in the best I can there. Just the look at this thing and the way that LEGO made it to build is just very well done. Another thing you can do with this particular set is that you can separate it into two pieces. So moving it like this, you can see that we separate it like that. We have some Technic pins being shown over here, some Technic axles on this side, and then we have a plain sort of Technic plane area right there with some holes that you can stick those axles into. That is how you connect both sides of this Hogwarts. It makes it easier for carrying it from one location to the other without breaking it. And then like I mentioned before, there's just another look at just some sticker decals that you can see within this set. So turning this around to take a look at the interior, the interior of the set has a lot to offer. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of stickers within this set to add all of the details that you can see. Starting right over here, we have the Great Hall. We get a lot of stickers for some banners and also for the very front doors, which you saw from the very front. We get the four Hogwarts house tables as well as the teacher table towards the back. I really love the colors over there as well, the translucent colors towards the windows. You can also see underneath it we get the Chamber of Secrets using some more stickers for the face of Salazar Slytherin. We also get that new snake mold inside that sand green color, very nice to get that. And also a one by one tile piece being represented for Tom Riddle's diary. Underneath the next little section right here, this big tower, we have the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets, also above it as well. That being this main sort of circular sticker area right there, very nice. We move up, we get some staircases to Hogwarts, like I mentioned inside that video. Nothing really too special going on there, but then that does bring you to the girls' bathroom right here, which you can see we have a little sticker of Moaning Myrtle, I really love that. We'll be getting a minifigure of her inside the Series 2 of 2020. We get the main sort of sink area that leads down to the Chamber of Secrets. And then on the other side, you can see that we get another sticker just showcasing the Prefect's bathroom with that mermaid stained glass area. Very nice that they go all out with those details. Also in the background of the staircases, we get some portraits, some of those featuring some of the designers. They snuck themselves into the, po into the posters and everything. I really like that. And these do move back and forth, only in one sort of direction, trying to get a good view at that back and forth. Just a small little turn, not 360 direction. Going up here, we have the Gargoyle to Dumbledore's office. Really love how they represented that. And then that brings you to Dumbledore's office. There are a lot of references like Fox, the Phoenix. You also get the Sorting Hat and the Sword of Gryffindor. And also the very back right there. I really love how they went all out with those details. Some more portraits all the way at the top. And then that brings you to the very top of the tower. Moving over here, we have the Defense Against the Dark Arts Classroom, which is very nice to get. I love the references for the Pixies and the Sneakoscopes and all of that stuff. You even get the Gramophone right there, I really love to see that in there. Right next to it, we have the Dolores Umbridge Office, which is probably the pinkest color that they probably could have put inside here. I really love that they just went all out with that, that's very nice. And then, of course, they have the plates on the wall for the cats, I really love that. Underneath here we have the 7th Collie Door right here which also features the door to the Room of Requirement which you see on the other section of this particular build. We also have some more sticker decals over here and also the chamber has been opened, Enemies of the Air Beware little sign right there from the Chamber of Secrets. Below it we have some of the entryways over here too. The Mirror of Erised, where Harry finds the Philosopher's Stone. We have the Key Room, we have the Chest Room, and then finally we have the room with the mirror itself. And I also love how they represent the Philosopher's Stone with that translucent red stud. Behind the Room of the Keys, we do also get the Devil's Snare Room, which is very nice. As another little reference, if you do remove the castle, since this does still come apart like that. Moving from this room, we now move on to the other side over here. This side features the Gryffindor common room right over here and also the library on the other side. We get a lot more stickers over here just on these paneled areas just for some more details. Underneath down here we can move. We have the room of requirement with all these stacked up chairs and stuff. We also have a bunch of cups and a lot of different things going on there. Really love that they represented that with the stickers in the background using a lot of normal size minifigure objects just shrank down in sticker form. And then finally over here we have the potions classroom. A lot of 
very nice stickers in the background of that as well and also using that small cauldron piece very clever as well as the studs right there on those stamp pieces and transclear represented as cauldrons for your nano figs as well very nice that lego went all out with that in addition throughout the model we also get a lot of these smaller tree builds and that's pretty much all that i have to say a lot of stickers a lot of very nice details within this particular set definitely a collector's item for huge Harry Potter fans. Taking a look at our first retail set, we have set number 75950, Aragog's Lair. This includes two minifigures of Harry Potter and Ron Weasley right there, dead center. I gave them their alternate facial expressions because that definitely works with this particular scene featuring Aragog and all of these spiders that Ron is not too much of a fan of. So removing our minifigures out of the situation and just taking a quick look right here, we get a lot of these new spider molds right here inside various colors, both black and inside that nougat color. We get two in black and then three inside that nougat color. These are just loose. And then the other ones are featured on the model itself over here. So removing these spiders, just real quickly, we're gonna take a look at the big one. We have Aragog himself. Very nice to see that they actually made him I think that this is probably the best and most accurate Aragog that we've gotten, like, out of all of the other Harry Potter sets. The 2002 one, I think, is a little, a little, uh, a little weak, but that is to be expected since it was released back then. And then the one that just came out inside 2010, I think, is definitely a weak comparison compared to this one, which I think LEGO went all out with. You can see that we used those very nice leg pieces right here, which I believe were previously used on the Ant-Man set right there with the Anthony character that they made brick built. You can see that we get the pincers right there on the very front. We get some printed eyeballs which are exclusive to his character. I really like that they give him four eyes on the front of his character, very nice. You can also see that we have these other pincers down here. You can see how that works. And then of course his eyes can move like that, which is, <laughs> if you just want to mess around with the character, I think that's really funny that you, if you want to just mess around with him. And then of course the legs do move as they're on those clip pieces. You can move those back and forth like that. No 360 direction unless you move them a little bit carefully. You can move these back ones a little bit, but not really too much. You can see how that works down here on the very back. And then we also have the very back of the spider, which this is actually secured quite nicely using some different types of hinge clip pieces back there. And just taking an overall look at his character, just very nice that LEGO made him within this set. And it's a nice and cheap $15 set to get this character. As for the build, we get the one play feature right here of this little flick missile that you can just flick out. And that features this spider web print, which I believe they might have reused within some Spider-Man sets as of recently, which is very interesting to see that they introduced that in there. I don't know if it was introduced in here or within another Spider-Man set, but pretty nice just as another little extra play feature. We have this small little tree build, nothing really too special, a lot of greenery going on around it. And then of course we get this spider web just attached to one of these clip pieces. Very nice that they included this bar type spider web. We don't usually get those too often. And then we have this spider on there. And then we have another spider just dripping down here from the tree, which I really like that they use the that they use that stick with the stud on the end piece right there. That's very nice. We get a mushroom and just some other little tree build things going on on the very back of this. Taking a look at our next set, we have set number 75953, Hogwarts Whomping Willow. This includes minifigures of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Seamus Finnegan, Severus Snape, and Argus Filch. Removing our minifigures from the equation right here, we have three builds to take a look at. Starting off with the first one, we have the flying Ford Angular car from the Weasleys. I really like this build. It has been rumored that we will be getting another version of this particular vehicle coming within a 2020 set, but we can take a look at some of the stickers we have on the very front and also on the very side. We get a print actually right here, which I think is very nice, just showing some extra little details that LEGO put. We have another sticker back here. And then you can just take a look. We get the regular wheels right here. Since this is a car, you can see how that goes back and forth like such. Get the windshield. I really love the color scheme of this. Just very well done by Lego. You can pop the top right off like that. And you can also get into the back right here. We get a little trunk area that you can pull up like such. We get two of these suitcases in brown right here. Just the Hogwarts luggage, very nice. We get one singular area right here 
for your minifigure to sit. We get one steering wheel just dead center right there. Hopefully the new one that they decide to make gives you an area for two minifigures since you can't really fit two minifigures within this particular set. You can see that you can just put Harry dead center like that and you can't really have another minifigure behind him unless you make him so close to the steering wheel which I don't even think really helps very well. You can put Ron on the very back stud back there but I don't really like how that works. I would have liked to see them sit side by side, not one behind the other one. I think that LEGO's probably going to fix that in the near future. And then of course these doors do open on this particular vehicle. The next build is the Hogwarts Whomping Willow, which this is the build that I hate the most out of this entire set. That's because... There you go, that's because that's the only reason why I don't like this build. These small little pieces just love to fall off of this thing and I just know that they're gonna just keep falling, you know, as I move this around. You can see that this area does spin around inside a 360 direction. You can see that we get them on all of these little Technic hole pieces right there, very interesting. We get some ball joints right here, so then you can move these arms, so then if you're pretending they like crash into something, you know, that's very nice. And then of course you can stick the Weasley's car up inside the Whomping Willow like such. And then of course more of those just love to fall. We get the stickers on these big cylinder pieces right there in the center. You can also move this around using this play feature right here. There's a little part that you can spin to spin this tree around, but of course that will loosen up more of those little twigs and stuff. We also get the reference on the very front as well that you can go into the secret passageway to get to the Shrieking Shack that LEGO has not made yet. Hopefully they do make one of those sometime in the near future. I thought that that would be a reference to them making a new one, but it wasn't. So hopefully we get one of those sometime in the near future, just another set that I am asking for in addition. Looking at the final overall model for the overall build, we get a lot of different stickers just for the outer details. You can see them just on those wall elements along the side. We also get a lot of different window pieces throughout this set as well. We get this main overarching area over here, which I think is very nice if you do wanna have just like the Weasley's car poking out of that in your display. That's a very nice feature done by Lego right there. And then finally you get some more stickers over here. Moving up, we just get a little bit of a teeny tiny tower going on over here, and then we get the main tower over here that they added into the equation of this particular set. Spinning it around, you can take a look at the interior details. So taking a look over here, we have the Potion Master's office right down here. Very nice to get Snape's office down here in this corner printed piece of the Wingardium Leviosa spell all the way in the background. Don't know why they put that there. And then we also have the Daily Prophet with the boy who lived, which isn't really accurate to the scene. I would have liked to see maybe an exclusive print featuring having the Ford Angula being sighted in Muggle Towns and all that. That would have been really cool. We get some stickers in the background for some more portraits and stuff. We have some other little details going on there. You get a chair for Snape if you want to sit him down. And this is where he tells off Harry and Ron. We get another picture right there on that side, another sticker. And then moving back over here, you can see also on the very top, you do get a spot for your characters to actually walk around over here. You can put Argus Filch patrolling the very top, looking for students out of bed, since we also do get the Gryffindor common room somewhat over here. You get two beds for some Gryffindor students to go on, and also a very nice sticker for the flag in the very background. Very nice of Lego to include that. Moving down here, we get another little storage area over here. Don't really know what's going on there, but I guess we have a little frog going on there. Maybe Trevor. That would have been really cool. Just another little reference to the first two films of Harry Potter. We get some potion stuff on the sides over here on these little cabinet areas. We get this little broom. I guess that's for Filch if you want to use that with him. Moving to the very top of this tower, you can see that we have a somewhat owlry going on over here. We get a little bit of parchment and also a quill right there with your head wig, which is very nice as a little reference to write a letter to someone. That would be very nice as another little reference. And then finally, that brings you all the way down here to another part of the potions room, which I think it's very clever that they use the Power Miner's rock piece right there just as like a little explosion for the potion, which goes very well with your Seamus Finnegan character since he is always somewhat doing that to himself. And then we have some more stickers in the very background right there with some more shelves with some more potion stuff going on over there. And just like the Hogwarts Great Hall, this set can connect to 
the other parts of Hogwarts. This set can connect to the Hogwarts Great Hall, and the Hogwarts Great Hall can connect to this, and both of these models can connect to the 2019 version of the Hogwarts Clock Tower, and these will hopefully all connect to the Hogwarts Astronomy Tower coming in late 2020. Taking a look at our next set, we have set number 75954, Hogwarts Great Hall. This is the biggest of the 2018 LEGO Harry Potter retail set wave other than the direct-to-consumer set. We get a total of 10 minifigures including Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Draco Malfoy, Susan Bones, Albus Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Hagrid, Professor Quirrell, and nearly headless Nick down at the very bottom. Looking at the small builds first, we get one that goes within the castle and then two that do not, that are just side, I guess, in side introductions within this particular set. So taking a look over here, we get one little boat that can bring you to Hogwarts. You can actually fill all of the first year minifigures that you get within this set into this little boat if you try, you know, because there's enough space for that, which I think is crazy. And then of course you can have hat. And then, of course, you can have Hagrid greeting them at the very front doors of the Great Hall. I think that this is a very accurate representation of the Great Hall. I really like how LEGO made it. And then this boat piece is one of the older style boat pieces, if you are interested. And I don't think it floats. Taking a look over here, we get this snake, this bas this basilisk right here. Very interesting inclusion by LEGO. I bet a lot of people were really unhappy to see that we didn't get a new Chamber of Secrets which I know I mentioned that before, but this is the closest that they gave us to that snake. And it isn't even color accurate. You can see that you can open its mouth right here using these clip pieces. You can see how that works. Really like that they do include the fangs though. You can use those to destroy hall cruxes. And then you get some ball joints right here towards the very back. So then you can move the body of the snake and the very tail, which I, I don't like the build for this. You know, it's okay for what it is. As a Harry Potter fan, I obliged to like everything to do with this theme but you know it's a very it's a very odd inclusion within the set just I thought that I think it would have been better if they just kept it the way it is with the year one stuff and not have to include this snake which doesn't really even make sense within this particular set without a chamber of secrets and then for our final mini build right here we get the mirror of Erised which this is the third time that we ever got this particular item within a Lego set, which I think is very interesting the way that they made it. I really love that they do include these stickers right here for the very sides and also the very top right there with the word Erised to represent the mirror of Erised. Color scheme I think is okay. It's good for what it is using using this gold and also this orangish yellow going on over here for the sides of it. And then of course we do get these mirror sticker pieces, which I think is very cool. And it also gives you an inside look at Harry's parents, what they could possibly look like in Lego form if you're interested. I really like how they include that with Harry right there in the front of the mirror. And then the other bonus about these is that you can take them out and then replace them. They are double sided. So taking a look at this side, we have Dumbledore with his socks, which I love that reference. That's really cool that Lego included that. And then on the other pane, we get another additional pane right here, which features Ron with the Quidditch cup and everything. I really love that reference. And then the very back features Quirrell with the Philosopher's Stone that he cannot yet because he isn't using the mirror correctly. So yeah, that's pretty cool to show all of these different references within this particular set. I really love that they do include all of these. Taking a look at Hogwarts itself right here, you can take a look at the very front doors, which those are actually really big. I really love how they include these giant doors for the very front. I think that's very nicely done by Lego. And it also is pretty cool just having this very front part being like where the boat drop off the first years. I think that's very nice that Lego included that reference. We get some stickers on the very side of this tower area. And in addition, we get another door way over here that you can enter from that side to get into this particular tower area. Taking a look at the outer look of Hogwarts right here, I really love how they did this. I think it's very nice that LEGO actually included these graded panes within these window pieces. That's very nice that LEGO included that. I also really love how just how this hurt how all the arcs and everything look within this particular set. The architecture used, I think, is very clever and very well done. You can take a look at the side. I also really like that they do represent this side part that comes out both inside this set and inside the direct-to-consumer set. That's very nice that LEGO went all out with that. 
And then that does bring you to the interior, which does feature quite a lot to look at. So taking a look at the interior of the Great Hall, this is probably my most favorite play feature within the set, which this is the first time that LEGO has actually represented House Unity within the LEGO Harry Potter themes, featuring all all of the Hogwarts houses. Right here you can see that we have the flags for Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. If you flip those around right here using that serving hand piece right there on that Technic feature, you can flip this to Slytherin and you can flip this to Gryffindor. I really love that Lego did that, just as another little reference to all these houses and definitely you even get a Hufflepuff student within this set, which I think is another really good bonus. As for the seating of the Great Hall, this is also the first time that LEGO has included all four of the houses tables, which I think is a little crazy, but I don't think it is as accurate as it could be. Definitely this set should be a lot bigger if it were to be an actual minifigure scale set, but this is just enough to get you started, which I really like that LEGO went that route. The one thing that I do have to complain about also right here is the amount of food. There isn't a lot of food within this table. I would have liked to see some more of the food being represented on there since Hogwarts is supposed to have a lot of that. And then we only get the three seats back here for the teachers, which is, I, I'm fine with that having the teachers podium in the very back, which wasn't even featured within the 2010 Hogwarts Castle set, which I think is a little disappointing as well. I do like that we also get the fireplace in the background, that's very nice, and then of course you get the house cup just featured all the way back there, no point system being used, and then you have some brooms just on some clip pieces on the very side. Moving to the big tower area, this is also the spot where you can connect to the Hogwarts Whomping Willow set that I'll do in a little bit. We also get these little staircases, which I like represented inside this nougat color. I guess that's new for this theme. We have a yellow frog going on over there on a podium. Don't really know what that's about. We get another broom right there for Filch if you're connecting the, if you're still connecting this to the Hogwarts Whomping Willow set. Above it, we have some more potion stuff, which this actually features a full-blown cauldron right there with some more rocky pieces inside that trans green color. We also have a smaller cauldron right here with a trans red rock going on. We also have some other potions on this little table. No stickers going on over there. Moving up one more time, we have a little treasure chest. You can take that off. That's connected by a jumper plate piece. You can look inside there. You get some various gems. One of those, I believe, I guess you can say is the Philosopher's Stone if you want it to be. We also get one of those black spider molds. And then, of course, the very cool part of this is that you get the Sorting Hat, which is only available within this set unless you get the Harry Potter Building Your Own Adventure book from 2019 that I will include within my 2019 Lego Harry Potter collection video. And then finally, that brings you to the very top, which features Fox the Phoenix, which this is a brick belt version of Dumbledore's bird. Very nice to include him within this particular set. I really like the brick belt version, though I'm really happy that Lego has decided to actually make a printed version of his character inside the upcoming collectible minifigure series. So you guys can look forward to that when I do eventually do my review for that. And then also in this very top part, you can put the mirror of Erised, which I think is a very nice inclusion by Lego that you can just slide this in like that. You can even just toss this behind it if you want to just hide the other window pane, you can hide it behind it. And then that keeps that mirror in place and then it's hidden within the model. And then, then finally, that does bring you to the very back, which features the very top of the overall castle. And that's pretty much all for the interior and exterior details for this set. Okay, so here is a quick look at both the Hogwarts Great Hall and the Hogwarts Whomping Willow combined from the year 2018. You can see that they both combine using some Technic features all the way down here. You can see that there is still one exposed on that very side right there, and it does clash a little bit. If you've seen my other Hogwarts collection video, you'll see that there is a little bit of a cr there is a little bit of a clash, which I'll show in a little bit when I turn this around where the light on the Hogwarts Whomping Willow set clashes into the staircase for the Hogwarts Great Hall set. And also here are all of our minifigures from these two sets just shown together right there, showing year one and year two. I really like how that combines just showing a year one Hogwarts Castle, a year two Hogwarts Castle. And then we skip all the way to year four, which technically has a little bit of year three in it since it is the Hogwarts Clock Tower, which is featured heavily within the third film. And then we will be getting something for year five slash six this year in 2020 to add on to this Hogwarts extension. So yeah, that's all for that. So let's move on to our next set. 
Taking a look at our next set, we have set number 75955, Hogwarts Express. This set includes minifigures of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Remus Lupin, Trolley Witch, and a, de and a Dementor. Looking at this set, we get a total of two builds within this particular set, one for the train and then the other one for the station, which I think is very nice that we get a train station, which I believe this is the first time that we're actually getting a train station within a Harry Potter Hogwarts Express set. I believe that we also got teeny tiny bits and pieces within 2001 and then yet again in 2004. So taking a look at the train station itself, there is quite a lot to look at. We get a lot of stickers also within both this and the train itself. You can see that we get stairways that leads up over here and then up and around and down from King's Cross and then you can enter the barrier to Hogwarts platform nine and three quarters. This particular build is also referencing mostly Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. You can take a look from the back over here, just taking a look at the overall build. You get an overall archway area for your train to fit in. I really like that they include that. The one thing that I don't like about this train station build is that it is pretty weak in comparison to the train build. This is pretty easy to break both this particular area where this part comes together and also especially when you want to clip this onto studs it's very hard to remove and not break it. You can see over here we get some stickers for the main clock at the very top of the train station just telling you what time it is. You can move the little serving hand pieces to change what time it is. Very nice using the Roman numerals. You can also see that over here we get another sticker that says King's Cross to tell you that you're in King's Cross. And then that brings you over here to the barrier between King's Cross and nine and three quarters. One thing to note is that I didn't bring out my Scabbers character to go with this particular trolley, but this is the same exact sort of trolley build as the Harry's Journey to Hogwarts polybag. You, all you gotta do is just run between the barriers and then that'll bring you all the way over here, which I think is really crazy that they include this as a play feature. You can see the Technic functions going on over here. And then we have just platforms nine and then behind it platform 10. I really like that as just another little reference. You can see how that goes. That's just all a bunch of Technic features. You just gotta push that like that. And then over here, in addition, we have some more stickers and some other printed pieces. Over here we get a wanted sign for Sirius Black, which this definitely led you to thinking, we gotta see a Sirius Black minifigure sometime soon, and definitely we were correct in 2019, we got Sirius Black within the Expecto Patronum set. We have some little lights right here, you can just fix those, those are on clip pieces. And then right next to it we have some daily profits right there if you're interested, the boy who lived with Harry Potter right there front and center. And then over here we have another sticker with 9 and 3 quarters Hogwarts Express. For the train build, there's a lot to look at. We have some stickers on the side parts over here. You can also see just like the building style of this, I think is very nice using these window pieces, regular window pieces, and also these being like pretend doors over here. I really like how they include that. I would have liked to see maybe some more extension since the Hogwarts Express does move on, but I think that that would have increased the price, which not a lot of people are too much of a fan of these days. So looking into this particular build, you can see how this works right here. We get some looks at some seats. You can see, sit down your minifigures, and then dead center we have the Trolley Witch's cart, which I think is very nice, filled with chocolate frogs and pretty buddy beans and all those other fun stuff. You can sit your minifigures down and just have them chilling. I really like how they include just like a side area for your minifigures to relax and everything. And another bonus is that you can remove this window area from the other side features the same sticker as this side and this is where you can actually get into more detail within this particular set so moving to this side it makes it a little bit easier on my part you can see over here we get the trolley which is cart can pull that out nothing really too special same sort of wheel detailing as the one that comes within most of the other trolleys within this particular set and also the poly bag that I mentioned before right here those are just clipped on like such you can see how that works like that and then that is a nice little interior for your characters to sit down which one other thing to note is that since your minifigures mainly have the regular small legs it is a little hard just to sit them down since they have those legs you just gotta stand them up where they are and then of course this part like I said just goes right back on top and then this can go like that 
Moving to the next area right here, we get some big stickers over here, Hogwarts Railways, we get that on both sides. On the very top over here, you can open that up. And looking inside there, there is nothing, nothing going on in there. I guess that's just where you want to put the coal or something. Don't really know too much about trains, but that's just how that works, in my opinion. We get some stickers over here. We get this printed piece, which says Hogwarts Castle. I believe this is supposed to say Hogwarts Express on it. I don't know if that's entirely correct, but it's really cool that they include that as a printed piece. And then same thing goes for the very front of the Hogwarts Express, how we get this as a printed piece, and also you do get the numbering and all of that stuff. One other thing to note is for this train, we get some regular wheels compared to train wheels, so these won't work on train tracks unless you modify it. So that's one other thing to note if you're looking at this particular set. Taking a look from the other side, you can see just how it works with the same sort of building techniques on this side using same stickers, same prints and all that. You get some stickers down in this general area over here, which is pretty nice. And I do like how the wheels look just build wise. And then when you do move the Hogwarts Express, you can see how it moves like this. Very nicely done seeing how that works right there. That's really clever of Lego to include that. These are all clipped together using some Technic functions and then right here in the very back you can see we get some prints right there for the dials and everything and then just the fire at the front of the train. And that's pretty much all for the train. You can put your minifigures in as you so desire. You get one other Hogwarts Castle sticker right there on the very back over here. And that's pretty much all for the stickers and details for this particular set. Fits very nicely with with the station that they provide in it. And then the minifigures make for some pretty good play scenes. Taking a look at our next set, we have set number 75956, Quidditch Match. This set includes minifigures of Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, Oliver Wood, Marcus Flint, Lucen Ball, and Professor Severus Snape. One thing to note about this set is that it is pretty play feature orientated. There is a lot that include the minifigures in order to make the play features work to their most satisfactory. There are a lot of stickers within the set, which I think I'm pretty fine with since it does represent all four of the Hogwarts houses, which really hasn't happened before. And this is the first time that we're actually getting Quidditch stadiums for all four of the houses. In addition, this set is definitely one that you would want to buy two of. Sadly, I haven't been able to find another copy of it since it has retired at pretty much most of the targets that I have gone to, and it hasn't gone down on clearance since this is quite a popular set. So starting off with the smaller builds within this set, before we take a look at the Quidditch stadiums, we get a treasure chest right here, which this features a lot of the black studs right here which you use as the bludgers that you shoot off from that stud gun all the way back there. And then in addition you are supposed to get another quaffle within the set. The other one I gave to Marcus Flint which you saw in the beginning of this video which is the red head with the red stud on top of it. But we are supposed to get another additional one of those. I just gotta find it. It's just something somewhere inside my collection. Didn't have time to get it for this video. Then we have this little trophy right here, which this is supposed to represent the Quidditch Cup, which I think is very nice that LEGO included that, just another little accessory within this particular build. For the Quidditch stadiums, we get one for each house. Starting off with Gryffindor right here, we get this very nice Gryffindor print on the front of this window piece. This area can lift up to release your players. I guess this is where you want to have your players fly through and get right onto the Quidditch field. Very nice that they include that. And then of course, all of these include pretty much the same sort of like color scheme sort of look right here, red and yellow for Gryffindor, light gray and blue for Ravenclaw, light gray and green for Slytherin, and then black and yellow for Hufflepuff. Right here you can also sit down your characters at the very top, we get a flag, they're all facing in the same exact direction right here. Here's a look at the blue one, the blue, the blue for Ravenclaw and the yellow for Hufflepuff are both connected to the main sort of center area with the hoops. Right here within the Ravenclaw area we get this megaphone right there. I guess that is somewhat of a somewhat of a reference to the commentators. Very nice that they put that there. We get a little flag piece with a sticker for Go Ravenclaw. Very nice that they include that. Very cool. And then we get two more Ravenclaw stickers on this particular build. We also get a little bit of a leafy thing going down there, which we also get only Slytherin one over here, which I think is very nice. You can take a look at the Slytherin one. You get the same sort of look as the one for Ravenclaw right there, but with some different stickers for Slytherin. And then up here we have Professor Severus Snape hanging out, which I think is very nice. 
And then the one play feature, which if you look at the very back right here, you can take a look, we get one of these gear pieces. So as you know, this is Harry's first Quidditch match. And then, ooh, Severus Snape's on fire. I really like that they include that as a little reference. And then of course you get your minifigure of Hermione Granger to do that, which Quirrell doesn't come within the set. That would have been a perfect opportunity to include him in a cheaper set. But I'm pretty happy that they didn't do that. That leaves him as an exclusive minifigure within the Hogwarts Great Hall. As for the other builds right here, we also get the Hufflepuff Stadium using a similar sort of building technique with those stickers right there. And then we also have the point system, which we have full points for all the houses for some reason represented there. Those are some very interesting printed pieces right there using a sort of silver circle going on the very center of that which those you can store within this medium area right here. If you put that down, you can put your points within there if you don't want to have them on the scoreboard. And then of course you can change what house gets what points. So removing these two end bits over here, we're gonna take a quicker look at that. So right here we have Gryffindor versus Slytherin going on, which of course we only get Quidditch players from Gryffindor and Slytherin within the set. We have yet to get any sets with any other players within it. Hopefully we do get some more Quidditch players sometime in the near future for Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw would like to see a Ravenclaw Cho Chang Seeker. That would be pretty cool to go against Harry and maybe even up an updated Harry minifigure would be pretty nice. One of the older Harrys to go versus her, that would be pretty cool. Or maybe even Cedric Diggory within his Hufflepuff robes would be pretty nice. Very back over here, you can see that we have some storage areas on the very back, which feature the two remaining houses right here, that being Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. We get some stickers for those. These were updated to prints in 2019, I believe, for some of the other Harry Potter sets. They actually made prints of these tile pieces, which I think is very nice, but it's pretty cool just to see that LEGO was going all out with the house unity, showing all four Hogwarts houses within this particular set. In addition, like I mentioned before, we also get this stud gun right here to launch some bludgers. Very nice to include that. That represented by the black stud. You can shoot those off just like a normal stud gun. And then back here, we have the goal hoops, which this also includes a really cool play feature. If you turn around this model over here, you can see that we get this area right here featured by Technic. We can move your minifigure of Oliver Wood to block the goals. I really love that. That's a really cool play feature that LEGO included and that definitely makes you want to get two of these because you only get the one set of goals and you need two sets of goals last time I checked if you want to play Quidditch. So taking a look from the front view you can see that you have your minifigure of Oliver Wood. You can push that back and forth to block the goals. I really love that they include that. And then of course you have your minifigure of Marcus Flint trying to get the quaffle through the goals, which of course you can launch that via the stud gun and then that goes out into the distance over there. But here's a look at his broom featuring that new play feature right there using a clip piece and then one of these stud gun areas right here that you can launch this from. Very nice and creative idea by Lego right there. Zero five. The next set is set number 5005254, Harry Potter Minifigure Collection. This is the Harry Potter Bricktober pack that was released in the US as a Barnes & Noble exclusive and then was released other places as a Toys R Us exclusive. Within the set we get Boggart Severus Snape, Horace Slughorn, Madame Hooch, and Professor Dolores Umbridge. This is just a quick look front and back at the characters I will be showing them earlier on within this particular video. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigures that are included within this set. Starting off with our first Brickhead set, we have set number 41615, Harry Potter and Hedwig. Of course, as this is a Brickhead set, we do not get any minifigures, but we do get a number of really nice exclusive prints on these characters. Taking a look at our smallest, we have Hedwig here. We have Hedwig here, she looks pretty nice. You get some exclusive eye prints for her character, which I think is very nice, using this yellow color instead of the normal black with the same sort of Brickhead's eye print. I really like how they did that, just, an, just as another little change to her character. She also does get some printing for the size of her wings on these slope pieces, pretty nice. And of course she is inside this smaller scale compared to your Harry Potter minifigure. You can also move those wings a little bit if you so desire, just a little tiny bit of movement right there, but nothing really 
that would help make the character look any better. I do like how they keep some flat tiles on the sides of the character's head. Not really too complicated, just a very nice look to the character. You can take a look at the plate. Looks different compared to a lot of the other Brookhead's characters. And then you can place her right in the center of the plate. So yeah, that's pretty much all for Hedwig. Looking at Harry Potter, we get an exclusive print on this 1x4 tile piece in tan for his scar. I really like that. We get the regular Brickhead's eyeball prints right there. Really like how they did the glasses right there. That is an exclusive piece to his character. If you take those off, you can have a Daniel Radcliffe. And if you also remove that jumper plate right there, that's very nice if you want to do that. His hairstyle looks pretty nice. I really like how they did that. You can take a look. He even has his ears going on right there. We have some print. We have a print on this 1x3 tile piece for a scarf. Very nice. And then we also have a print on this 1x1 brick with the Gryffindor house plate right there. That's really nice that they did that. You can take an overall look at his character. And then he is, of course, on one of those regular brickhead stand pieces right there. You can take a look at that. And then you can just place his legs right back on there. No printed tile for the front of that since they stopped doing that when these came out. And yeah, that's pretty much all for our character of Harry Potter. There's a look at the top of his head. Very nice. For, our next, for the next brick headset, we have set number 41616, Hermione Granger. This character also has some very nice prints to our character as well. We get the regular Brickhead's eyeball prints for the front. We also get a print on this one by two brick piece for the very front of her outfit. I really like how they did include these characters all inside different outfits, that's very nice. And then we also get some printing on this one by four brick on the very bottom for her skirt. We also get one accessory for her character. If you take off that book piece, we get the same print of the Wingardium Leviosa spell on there. And then it can clip that right back into her hand. Very nicely done there. And also these characters all feature the old style wands being the stick piece. I think that's very interesting to show. I like the look of her hair using a lot of these melon slice tile pieces on the sides and also on the back of it. And then just an overall rounded head piece on the very front. And then just the very front of her character. Very nice version of Hermione Granger, regular style for the plate piece right there for her character to stand on. And then for the final brick headset, we have set number 41621, Ron Weasley and Albus Dumbledore. We get some exclusive prints on both of these characters as well. Taking a look at Albus Dumbledore, we get some very nice prints right here on his robes on these 1x2 tile pieces. Really cool to see those. I really like how they did his beard. Sort of looks like the potato chip mustache right there for Pringles, very interesting. I also really like how they did his glasses right there with the same sort of eyeball print, just expanded a little bit on these 1x2 tile pieces for his glasses. I really like that. We also have some more prints on these 1x4 one, one tile pieces on the top for his hat. We get the same print that's on the front of his robes right here for the sides of his arms. And then there's a look at the back. I really like how they did his hair as well. That looks really nice in addition to his hat. We will be getting this actual version of Dumbledore as a minifigure inside the Lego Harry Potter Series 2 minifigures this 2020. And yeah, just an overall very nice look to his character. Probably one of the best made brick heads from this Harry Potter line. And then for Ron Weasley, we get another very nice look to his character. He uses the same sort of pieces of both Harry and Hermione's minifigures using that 1x2 printed brick piece in the middle for the front of his outfit and also these 1x3 printed tiles for the scarfs which is used on Harry. Get the same Brickhead's eyeball prints right there for the front of the character. Get same accessory being that wand piece. You can take a look all around him. He's wearing a scarf just like Harry and I really like how they just gave him a different outfit compared to the other characters just so then it wasn't the same exact build. His hairstyle looks pretty nice. Definitely did a well, really good job with all three of these main characters. So yeah, that's pretty much all for these Brickhead's characters. Okay, so here are all of the minifigures included in the set number 71022 LEGO Minifigures Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts Series 1. These are all of the minifigures from the Harry Potter theme. Reading out the names of all of these characters, I'm also going to say how many are inside a full box. We have Harry Potter in his Hogwarts uniform, we get three of those. Hermione Granger inside her Hogwarts uniform as well, three of those. Ron Weasley in his Hogwarts uniform, three of those. Draco Malfoy in his Quidditch outfit, three of those. Neville Longbottom inside his Herbology outfit, three of those. Cho Chang inside her Hogwarts robes, three of those. Dean Thomas inside his Winter Hogwarts robes, three of those. Lord Voldemort, three of those. Dobby, three of those. 
Cedric Diggory inside his third task outfit, three of those. Professor Flitwick, three of those. Mad-Eye Moody slash Barty Crouch Jr., three of those. Albus Dumbledore inside his year five outfit, three of those. Luna Lovegood, two of those. Professor Sybil, Trelawney, two of those. And then finally, Harry Potter inside his invisibility cloak, two of those. Wrapping up this collection video, this was a lot of fun to do. Putting all of my 2018 sets, there is a lot to talk about when it comes to the 2018 LEGO Harry Potter theme. Not as much as 2019, but 2020 will definitely bring us a lot, a lot, a lot of really cool stuff for us to look at within the future. We got a total of one poly bag, two promotional items, one direct to consumer, five regular retail sets, three brickheads, and a collectible minifigure series featuring 16 characters to collect. We got a total of 56 minifigures, 12 named nanofig characters, 15 unnamed nanofig characters, 50 of these minifigures are unique to the sets that they come in, 6 of them are duplicates, and we might as well discuss prices. This whole entire wave would cost you about $754 without the minifigures, and that's not even including tax. With a full box of minifigures, this full wave of Harry Potter sets would cost you about $994 plus tax. But with a full set of minifigures, this whole wave would cost you about $842. And now here comes the fun part, rating all the sets within this wave. When it comes to rating LEGO sets, I don't normally do it very often. It's not something that I'm too much of a fan of because I do really love all of the sets that LEGO delivered within this series. But if I do have to rate the Harry Potter sets within this particular wave, I would have to rate just the regular retail sets. So going from best to worst right here, I think the best set within this entire wave is the Hogwarts Great Hall set. It includes a very nice minifigure selection, getting all of your main characters right out, right out of the bat. Very cool set to get, and also the building techniques used in there is pretty nice. Some of the stickers, you know, not really too much of a fan of stickers, but I'm fine with all the decals. I really love that they went with all this house unity, having both Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff represented in LEGO form for the very first time. Next would probably have to go to the Hogwarts Express, though yeah, they do use the normal small legs on the characters for this year three based set, which they later on moved to the mid-sized legs within 2019. I think that the build for the Hogwarts Express is probably the best build for it that we've ever gotten. It should have had train track able wheels on it. That is the only real complaint that I have with it, but I'm fine with it. I think that it, even including the station is a very cool bonus and having a lot of different references in it and having a lot of different play features is just a really cool thing about that set. Next would probably have to go to the Hogwarts Whomping Willow, though I really despise the build for the Whomping Willow itself. Since the leafy parts on that tend to fall off quite easily, I do love the minifigure selection and it's a really nice representation. And it's a very nice representation of a year two based set and you get Severus Snape in there that's a very nice minifigure to get that we don't that we only got within one other set within this particular wave. Next would probably be the Quidditch match set that has a very nice minifigure selection as well and it also does represent just like the Hogwarts Great Hall set, House Unity with all of the houses being represented with those Quidditch stadiums. Really love that they did that. And then finally Aragog's Lair. Though it is the smallest set within the wave and then it is the easiest way to get your minifigures of Harry and Ron within their casual forms, I think that that is probably the weakest set out of all of these sets for the Harry Potter theme that released as of this year. Ranking the Brickheads, I'd have to say that definitely the Harry Potter and the Hedwig has to win the top part of that. The next one would probably go to Ron Weasley and Albus Dumbledore, and then and then ending with Hermione Granger. The direct-to-consumer, I don't really have anything too terrible to say about that set. The stickers are really the only part that I have to complain about, having like so many of those, though they do make up by having all of that detail, which is really what that set needed. I think that the build for it is spectacular. It's probably one of the best builds that LEGO has done in a very long time for the Harry Potter theme. And it's definitely showing that LEGO is putting all of their efforts into this particular theme. But the thing that I think is the most, the probably the best part of this 2018 wave is the LEGO minifigure series. This was totally unexpected, at least in my opinion. I didn't think that they were gonna do this. This is just it's the best thing that they could have done, and 
I think that because it sold so well and they're making a second series of this, I think that this year, 2020, with the minifigure series, the direct-to-consumer, and all the sets that they're releasing, this is going to be one of their best themes of this year. And I'm going to buy every single set from it like I did for this year and for 2019. So yeah, overall, the Harry Potter theme is one of my favorites. I can drone on all about it for hours and hours, and I know you don't want to hear that. So I'm just going to end the video here. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to know every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>